today's video. We are Think of Themer and we love looking at board games from two different perspectives. My beautiful fiance Amy is the thinker. She loves looking at the mechanics of a game. And I'm Maggie and the themer. I just love getting lost in the theme and the story of a game. Today we're going to be looking at the game Barrage by, I'm going to have to read to too many um, designers, Tommaso Battista, Simone Luciani, and Antonio De Luca. And Simone Luciani is kind of a powerhouse designer. Mm -hmm. um, lots of favorites, Sulkin, and mm -hmm. um, is involved in Grand Austria Hotel. Uh, Marco Polo, which we just reviewed. Yes. Um, the sequel, yes. Marco Polo 2. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So lots of kind of anticipation over another one of his games. Yeah. So in Varage, you are playing competing electricity companies. And um, the beautiful thing about this is you've got a uh, down the mountain, you are trying to make sure that you capture the water in the right way um, with the right dams and you've got the right buildings to turn them into electricity. And whoever is the best at um, making or generating the most electricity along the way and fulfilling the right contracts will be victorious. And at the heart of this game is worker placement. And so, mm -hmm. you know, I wanted to say about this game that it has rocketed up the BGG charts. Mm. Like um, it was only, it was a Kickstarter originally. And um, now that it's hit retail, it's at number 51 of strategy oh, games. Mm -hmm. That's amazing, yeah. like so quickly. Um, and so, of course, we wanted to get our hands on it. It's worker placement. So that's, you know, one of our right up there, maybe mm -hmm. our favorite mechanic. Um, so we were happy to get this to the table. Um, what's really interesting about this game? Well, first of all, um, I want to say that this is the retail edition that you're looking at. Um, oh, my goodness. We have an overhead Yay! camera for the Hopefully first time works. ever. First time <laughs> ever. So, you know, it may or may not work. We'll see. Yeah. It might fall halfway through the room. <laughs> We we'll, promise to leave in the blue person. Yeah, we, we definitely will. Yeah. Um, anyway, what was I saying about the game? Oh, yeah, that's right. It was on Kickstarter. This is the retail edition. There were a lot of problems with the Kickstarter fulfillment. Mm. I'm not going to talk about them here. You know, I'm sure you could just have a look at any number of the angry forums if you wanted to read about that. Um, but the retail edition um, is a beautiful game. The, mm. the component tree and everything works as it should. Um, all of the meeples and boards are well designed. It, it is a huge table hog. Yes. Like we were so yeah, surprised. Right. Table real estate. So much real happen. estate because there's like a separate worker placement area, this area here, um, which is a separate board and then the generate electricity up the top. Um, but the main focus of this game is this beautiful waterways where mm. it's traveling down uh thema let me say the i want to say the french alps i believe so i am a bad <laughs> thema today I need to, I'm gonna have to um yeah. yeah and so there's kind of like it the water is trickling down the mountain and that is the main and super interesting mechanic here is that every round there is water that trickles down this terrain um, and it always goes from the top of the board uh, down to the bottom of the board and what you're trying to do is you're trying to generate electricity by putting a system of dams in place mm -hmm. that allow you to capture that water and harness the water mm -hmm. as it's coming down the mountain. But why it's super competitive and what's most interesting about that is that the water streams down in one direction and you might put, for example, these are the dams. If you put a dam here and you're hoping to collect water down this path, if someone else places a dam here or here and collects the water up the top, um, actually that water may or may not even get to you. So there's a lot of take that in the placement of this game. Um, but what you're doing uh, um, in this game is using worker placement spots to build that little system. And the way the system works is you've got three main components. You've got a powerhouse, you've got a conduit, and you've got dams. And once you have those three things together, um, and there's some rules about you know your ownership, the conduit can be any player's conduit um, but if you use their conduit they get payment as you might expect mm -hmm. um, but the dam has to be yours the powerhouse has to be yours and then when water collects in this little pool here you can siphon it out through your conduit down to your powerhouse to generate electricity but what's interesting about that is the pathway or the little pipelines that run between the dams are not in line with the way the water flows down um, the board and so it actually you can pull out a piece of water generate some electricity but you're also changing the direction or pathway mm -hmm. of that water as it flows down the board and ultimately off the yeah. board at the end so anyone who's in the pathway of this droplet of water is going to be able to generate electricity mm -hmm. all the way down 
but then it becomes like this brinkmanship of I've gone here now someone else has cut me off well I'm going to steal your power over here then yeah. and so there's a lot of like turmoil that goes on in trying to steal other people's water for electricity yeah. now learning this game um, what I thought was really interesting is it's a beast to learn like the the rule book we both had to read it mm -hmm. a couple of times but actually when you start playing it's really not as complicated as it looks and that's yeah. because the path to victory is very linear. Um, I would say that almost every game you need to be creating the right system. So you yeah. need to get your buildings off your board. Also, as you're make as you're building those buildings, you're unlocking like yeah. victory points and reoccurring mm -hmm. income and that type of thing. So you need to get that done. And then you need to every round be generating electricity because at the top of the board, as you can see is where we're generating electricity it does this up down thing which i was like well this is annoying and maggie's like well that's highly oh, thematic it? because yeah. of electricity and i was like i don't know i think uh, it comes in yeah it's like light is it yeah. waves yeah. yeah i don't know but you made a good point that i yeah. would never have picked up on it also uses more energy when you're moving it up and down oh so now we're harnessing friction <laughs> well no our own <laughs> energy <laughs> it just feels right yeah like, yeah it does yeah. but every round that gets reset and so there's an imperative to constantly be producing electricity. And of course, the bigger the system is, the more electricity you're generating, the higher the points you're starting to get in later rounds. And um, you also have contracts that you can fulfill um, that are based on the certain amount of electricity that you're generating that round. And so as you're getting a better engine and you're kind of unlocking more resources and things to help you get there, um, you're getting bigger points through the use of contracts. But everything else on the board, it looks super scary, but actually everything else on the board is just a tool to help you get to, to that end. Yes. It's very linear, like I said, to, you know, you're either gathering resources, you're um, making water come down the system, mm -hmm. you're collecting contracts so you can fulfill them. If you're familiar with worker placement games, actually there's no concepts here that are particularly yeah. difficult to understand. Mm -hmm. I think the one most interesting concept here in this game is, well, one, the water flow. Yes. That is super cool. And, you know, haven't seen anything like that. A little puzzle. Yeah. It's fun. It's yeah. really cool. And we've only played this at two players. If it was at three or four, it would be absolute chaos. Yeah. You would not be able to work out where the water's going to go. Yeah. It would be take that, take that, mm -hmm. take that the whole time. But I also wanted to talk about this because this wheel here Everybody has one. And this wheel reminds me of um, Sulkin. Mm -hmm. And in Sulkin, again, this uh, is also by Simone Luciani, um, the, the wheel is like a common wheel mm -hmm. and it moves once per round for everybody. And you have so few workers that it's kind of like mm -hmm. frustratingly slow. That's my problem with that game. Um, but here you all have an individual wheel. And what's really cool about this is when you want to build something. So if I want to build a dam, I have to put this little piece of puzzle here and then I have to put in the correct resources. So let's just say it's these three. I don't know what are they. <laughs> the cement yeah. mixes yeah. and anyway, some other thing. But this is machinery, and that's really cool because it's not like you're giving them away like you would a resource. Mm. And actually, you put them in here, the machinery that it takes to build a dam, and then you move it. And then there are worker placement spots that can help you move this faster because you are not going to be able to build another dam um, until you get this back. And then you get your machinery back too as soon as it works its, its way all the way around here, and then you can take it back again. But that ultimately is where time comes into this game mm -hmm. and your strategy around using this wheel. And that is really, really clever. I really yeah. like that about this game. Yeah. Um, I think from a thematic integration point of view, um, I really enjoy it. I, I remember Amy was like, do you feel like it's, it's thematic? I'm like, yeah, definitely. You definitely do feel like the water is trickling down. You're trying to figure out that puzzle where you put the, the dam to catch the, uh, the water do droplets. Even after you've processed that water, it's going to keep going. It's going to go somewhere else. It's, um, it's not going to yeah, evaporate. I don't know if that's actually thematically accurate in terms of when you generate electricity. It is the power of the water, from what I understand, not like burning it up. Um, that, that creates the, the power. The other thing is when you are, when you do generate the electricity, I do find myself doing that gin, 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 like that noise. You do that every time. Every <laughs> single time. Um, I love how, yeah, just like as if you are the, the, um, the manager, 
and you're never satisfied with how fast your, you know, your workers or your team is going, this little wheel can be so frustrating because it's like, it's so satisfying when they're like, mm -hmm. I'm going to send my workers there and I'm going to put my building there, put all the, I'll allocate all those resources and the machinery and crank it. And then it's like that because it doesn't always move. There's mm -hmm. no set thing that makes it move unless you uh, build something else and it cranks it again. Mm -hmm. Or if you're um, actually doing the workshop action that makes you like, force them along it is like you know going come on guys come mm -hmm. on and so you are having to allocate your workers to move things along so we can use that machinery to build other stuff and do other things so i really do enjoy that one um yeah the with the the contracts and all that that feels very like you know your stock standard sort of Euro yeah style. it's very yeah. very very heartland yeah. Euro. Yeah. i would say that it's um a little bit punishing um, I'm yet to win a game of this and, um, it, oh, yeah, it hurts me so much because I try really hard. Um, yeah. but Maggie, for some reason, just finds this very easy, this game yeah. and just kind of like, la 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 la. Oh, I won again. Where I'm like, girl, <laughs> scrimping and saving for every coin and everything. It just feels like mm. hard work. Um, but it, what I wanted to say is that it, if you make a couple of errors in the beginning placement of where you put your dams and your conduits and your powerhouses, or basically where you decide to set up that initial system, um, it can be punishing and that is very hard to catch up because you have such limited money in this game that you run out of resources to then build another system. You're not generating electricity fast enough and you can get left behind. So I think that uh, it'd be interesting to see how that changes mm -hmm. in a three or four player yeah. game, I think. But I would say I also love how many workers you have. Like you get so many workers so many. and you're like, oh, I'm going to be doing so many things. And then because a lot of the activity, like a lot of the, the oh, actions oh. require multiple workers, you still, I still end up feeling at the end of every round, I still end up feeling like, how, how did I use them all up? And I still feel like I haven't done everything or like half of the things that I want to accomplish. It's like, yeah. it's all, which is a really nice tension to have that, but oh, just mm -hmm. so close, but not, you know, not okay. Next round, next round. One thing is because as you said, like it, it's quite linear and that mm -hmm. you're always every round you're having to do certain things. I feel like the one of the downsides is that it doesn't allow you as much flexibility in terms of I'm just going to focus on this one strategy the whole game, which sometimes you can do with games. This one you do, it kind of does force you to do a little bit of everything. Um, otherwise, you're not going to be able to, to, to get ahead. So, so I think like now I'm at a point where I'm very keen to play with multiple players because mm. I feel like the real puzzle now is going to be, yeah, like the that interaction, water drama. This, yeah, the drama on this map and is where it's change, at. And it's one of those, like we were talking to a friend, I'm Chris C from Meeple Overboard. He was talking about someone who um, had one of those, like, I need to leave the table right now. Because it's like, <laughs> it's just something happens so quickly. Someone just builds a, a bloody dam that's right above your, your yeah. thing that you've been working so your plans. Ruins your entire plans. And you're like, oh, and that can happen very quickly. And like one... I remember like there was one time where you you took away my water. I siphoned all the water out, and yeah. I, and it, it, I didn't see it coming, and it was just like it was devastating, and it was infuriating, and I still won <laughs> eventually. But, but that's not the point. So and you do have some so it's sort of like a word of warning, but also like a heads up if you enjoy that. Like there's some of that, yeah, a lot of that, and probably the more players, the more of that yeah. you find here. I think that if you enjoy a linear game and. I have to say that when a game is linear, or and what I mean by that is that there's really not too many paths to victory, mm. um, then this game would totally be for you. And also, when it only has limited ways to win, it's much easier to teach because mm. you're like, ultimately, this is what you're trying to achieve, and here's yeah. how you get there. And then yeah. all of the worker placement spots are just, you know, mm -hmm. trying to get to that ultimate obje objective. Yeah. Um, so I love it for that reason. It will definitely get a lot of play on our table for that reason yeah. because I can imagine getting it out and teaching any of our friends who play worker placement mm -hmm. really quickly, really easily. They'll yeah. get it straight away. I love the mechanic of the interaction of the water drama. I love mm -hmm. the the wheel and mm -hmm. the fact that you can control how quickly um, that turns and you can get all your stuff back, mm -hmm. which is cool. Um, but ultimately for me, there's like... I really like it. It will stay in our collection, but it's it's not like the best mm -hmm. best for yeah, me. Yeah. Like I, you know, if I compare it to something like Feast for Odin, where everyone's kind of going out on their own mm -hmm. with a different strategy. Yeah. Um, I love that. Like I yeah. love when you can kind of try something new and then win yeah. using something, doing something completely yeah, different. Yeah. And I feel like here it is very much keeping you on track, kind mm -hmm. of like a, a 
a viticulture or a Snowdonia. Like everyone's kind of like following the same yeah. path. Which yes, if it's very um, you've got to be pretty t- uh, what's the word tactical? Yeah, about what's happening here. Which is very much in theme, like it's got, in the rule book, it's got this little story to set the theme up of, you know, you have these competing, yeah, I think they're competing companies and, you know, you all have your unique, your different countries, I believe, and your unique powers yeah. as well. So there's a bit of like asymmetric uh, abilities. Um, So it makes sense from that point that you all, because you're all trying to compete for the same thing, that the strategies all have to be somewhat similar. There's still some, some freedom within that. You can have a you know, kind of like building strategy focus or you can... Oh, it's pro and pro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, different types it's, of It's buildings. much. More, it's not. Yeah. It's not so much a, a game about like I'm going to try all these different strategies and see what works. It's very much about I need to be reacting to whatever yeah. my competition is doing. It's about reactions and yeah. it's about timing yeah. because you need to like there's goals that you need to meet each round as well mm-hmm. and you know and collecting a contract before you generate electricity and making sure you've got the right resources. It's yeah. all about timing. Yeah. Um, and I think. For that, it's it's really it's a really great game. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah, and we'll be playing more of this, and hopefully, one day I will win. Um, <laughs> one day. <laughs> anyway, if you liked this review, please subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, so we um, can get that feedback. You know, um, we're pretty happy about this like top down view that we have now. Well, yeah, um, <laughs> we'll see how it works. We'll see how it works, but you know, playthroughs, we're coming for you. Yeah, um, we're, yeah, we're getting some. <laughs> There's been some pushback from uh, playthroughs. Like, we'll be like, oh, do we, do we want to go into that? But I feel like, yeah, this, this maybe about, some short know. games are coming up with uh, live, well, maybe not live. Dip the toe in the oh, water. I we can get to live. Anyway, um, <laughs> we've got lots of reviews coming up, so stay tuned. Yeah, bye for now.